Well, we at Academic Centers are very proud of the care we provide for our patients. And we, de we describe it as multidisciplinary care. And from that, from a professional perspective, that means I bring in a radiation oncologist, a gastroenterologist, a surgical oncologist, medical oncologist, radiologist, a, a, a slew of different physician experts, all who are specialists in their own right on a particular disease. And we bring them together to focus on a particular patient and that patient's problems. And that's how we define multidisciplinary care. Part of what Canopy has taught me is that that's really not enough, that that's really not comprehensive care. And comprehensive care from the patient perspective should include access to social worker, nutrition, education, a little bit of TLC, sometimes psycho psychologist, uh, sometimes uh, emotional support, um, sometimes just more time. And in fact, I have to admit that although we were proud of the technical care we provide and the expertise we bring to it, it's not as patient-centric as it should be. And, and my perspective on this is that the, uh, the canopy is, uh, is designed to enlighten all of us on the technical side to bring a, a special level of care to pancreas cancer patients. I would say it's even more complicated than that because each institution's definition of multidisciplinary care varies. We're all proud of the care we provide, but I would say that as, as we're learning more about how other institutions take care of pancreas cancer patients, for example, we're learning that there are multiple different models of care. And I think that this may provide a, a, an opportunity to adopt a best practice among us. Now, uh, those of us in academic medicine uh, focus, of course, not only on clinical care, but on uh, the research involving the diseases we treat. And the types of research that we tend to do include laboratory research, understanding the basic biology of the disease, translational research, looking at the, tum at the patient's tumor in the laboratory to see if there are molecular vulnerabilities in the tumor that might lead to better treatments, or learning from mouse models as to what the best treatment is and then applying what we learn from the mice to the patient in the context of clinical trials using new treatments, new imaging devices, uh, novel ways of delivering care. Um, that's really where our expertise is. Um, what Canopy is allowing us to do is to examine the problem from a broader perspective. And that is looking at the patient and the patient journey and, and asking ourselves, what can we do to improve the patient journey? And what can we do to improve the outcome of all patients from what we learn on, on that journey? Um, and so I think that this, some people call this quality improvement, but I think that quality improvement is a gray zone uh, that, that merges into research. Research meaning we can learn new ways to care for the patient that result in better outcomes. If we can prove that a specific uh, style of management or a specific sequence of uh, offering resources uh, then I, and can have an impact on the patient's quality of life and survival, which is after all our goal to improve long, not only longevity, but to improve the quality of the length of time a person lives with their cancer, uh, then we will have made a significant gain. Now, one of the goals of Canopy is not just to do that within our individual cancer centers and learn from each other. It's to publish uh, our results and include others, uh, others into the Canopy um, uh, collaborative so that we can expand what we learn and apply it to many other cancer centers and to the benefit of patients nationwide and eventually worldwide. It's a lofty goal. It's clearly aspirational at this point, but I think that it's uh, a goal worth pursuing, and I think we're off to a good start. So uh, within the Canopy network of six uh, cancer centers, each center has chosen to, to bite off one task and to try to provide some small measure of improvement in how they care for patients. Uh, and it's been exciting because each one has a slightly different take on it, and, uh, and we're learning from each other's experiences. At Stanford, we decided to uh, empower a nurse navigator 
to meet with all of the newly diagnosed patient pancreas cancer patients and to uh, get to know them before their first visit, uh, make sure that they have the scans and the labs and the biopsies that, that they need, that we need to assess so that the first visit can be a productive one. But also to reach out to those patients after the visit to find out whether they have needs that might, might be uh, satisfied by a social worker, to link them with a dietitian, to make sure that they have a genetics clinic, whenever that seems appropriate, um, to make sure that they have uh, an, any additional uh, clinical trial options available to them. And for those patients who live some distance, to, uh, to be in touch with them, e even when they're being treated by their community physician, which is often the case for cancer centers where patients might live um, several hours away from the, from the uh, academic center. That level of connection is something that we've never really had before. And, uh, and we're hope hoping to assess its impact by patient surveys uh, before and after the fact, and also eventually by, uh, are we actually improving the care? Are we getting people to surgery on time? Are they, are they in better shape for their surgeries? Are they getting exercise and good nutrition before uh, major procedures? And what are the outcomes of those procedures? So hopefully we'll learn not just what technical tests are required in the sequence, but we'll learn from the patient's perspective, how to do this better. So a, a critical part of multidisciplinary care is the tumor board. And mm -hmm. uh, at Stanford, I think we have, we're up to 12 or 15 tumor boards now. And each tumor board is devoted to a particular disease or subset of diseases. At the tumor boards, we assemble specialists from many different disciplines. All, all tend to be physicians plus one nurse or two nurses. Oftentimes, this is a training exercise, so we'll have students, residents, fellows uh, uh, also attend because they enjoy and learn from the multidisciplinary discussion. What the canopy is enabling us to do, and in fact, I would even say enforcing us to do, is bring in the specialists that are not physician providers, but bring in those people who, uh, who can address the patient's financial needs, their travel needs, their, their emotional needs, their dietary needs. Are they getting exercise? Do they have questions about exercise? Do they have questions about alternative treatments that we're not addressing in our, in our 15, 20 minute interactions, uh, talking to them about their scans or their treatment or their side effects. So I think that bringing in the, a really a comprehensive component focused on the patient with all the services that every cancer center has but we don't necessarily utilize them to the advantage of each and every patient. And so that's the goal of Canopy is to find a most efficient way of assembling those teams of, of specialists, including the non-physicians. And, uh, and I think already that's had a, a tremendous effect on our communication and our ability to find new ways of collaborating all, all with the patient as a focal, focal point. You know, there, there are many words that have a lot of power. And in casual conversations with patients and family members dealing with difficult diseases, everyone should have hope. But I think it's a question of what we hope for. I hope for those patients that we have a shot at cure, that we can give them that cure. I hope that we can get their disease to a point where they don't have to worry about cancer where we can remove it, treat it, and it can be a bad memory.